Hello and welcome to Share Talk, where I'm joined by Gervais Hedl, who's CEO at Greatland Gold. How are you today, Gervais? Very well, Zach. Thank you. Right. Uh, yesterday, you uh, delivered um, a message to the market uh, regarding Javier on. Uh, what yes. was the what was the detail on that? Well, I think the clear message was no one was listening. Yeah. So I'll repeat it. Was Monday. It, it was Monday. It's Monday. It was, it's yeah. a quiet day. So I yeah. repeat it. Um, look, we, uh, you know, Javier on for us is a very exciting project. Um, it has the potential to be a multi-million ounce deposit. And yesterday's news, I think, you know, I believe is another important step forward in demonstrating that potential. So we don't have the grades from that intersection. We reported 239 metres of visible mineralisation, but we believe that that visible mineralisation is very significant. So maybe if I just back up a little bit for um, the viewers, just to explain Javier on. So Javier on, we originally attracted to it because A, it was a very large geophysical target, or one kilometre by one kilometre, um, coincident gravity and magnetic anomaly. And also because Newcrest had already done some drilling. They did six holes in the late 90s and early 2000s. We believe that only two of those holes actually um, intersected the system. And they found gold and copper in those, so wide zones of lower grade, but they also did get some higher grades, such as 15 grams per tonne gold, 2.5% copper. But they had really only just scratched the surface, we believe, of that system. And so then we went out and did our first drilling campaign earlier this year in April and May, and our first hole was 121 metres at 2.93 grams per tonne plus 0.23% copper, starting from 497 metres. And basically, I think what happened is Newcrest just didn't go deep enough. They literally, if you imagine there's a system 400 metres, starts at 400 metres by surface, and then it goes down a long way, and they really just scratched the surface of it. And we just went that bit further and we got bonanza grade gold up to nearly four and a half ounces a tonne. And this new um, campaign, which we've just started, in our first hole, we've put an angled hole in, and we've got two zones of visible mineralisation. The first one's 120 metres, beginning about, I think, 457 metres below surface. Um, and then we hit an unmineralised uh, mafic intrusion for about 85 metres, which is also what we saw and had one. We got those exceptional results. And then we came through that and we found more mineralisation for another 120 metres, down to about 780 metres. So we've extended the depth of this system. We've now seen mineralisation that hold over 239 metres. And as I say, we don't know what the assays will be for that, but it's, you know, the sort of rock we're seeing there is very similar to the rock we saw and had one, which was where we got the exceptional results. Right, you use the word uh, bonanza. Is that a geological term? Is that a um, colloquial term? I what think is... it's more of a colloquial <laughs> term. I don't know that it's in the geologist handbook, but okay. it's generally we would use it to, well, I think people in general use it to refer to anything, you know, more than a couple of ounces of gold per tonne. And obviously the, the great thing about having bonanza grade gold in the system, even if it's only you know, scattered small intervals is it dramatically raises um, the overall grade of the deposit because you don't need a lot of, you know, four and a half ounce per tonne material to suddenly bring the grade up even over 100 metre, 200 metre intercepts. Right. Now, is this uh, difficult to access? Is it a bit expensive to mine? I'm trying to work out why sure. the market is uh, grumpy. Yeah. Uh, also, yeah. had the market already factored in this kind of um, find that you had? Well, I don't know how you'd already factor it in because it's, you know, this is, you know, big news for us. So we, we believe this is a very important development. And obviously there's a lot more to go in the drilling campaign, uh, you know, and there's assay results to come. So there's a, you know, a lot of yards to go, but we believe this is a very important development. Um, in terms of Javier on itself, I mean, the Patterson region, you know, Javier is in the Patterson region. The Patterson region is seeing a lot of activity at the moment. Um, you know, the, the rumours are that Rio's made a big copper discovery about 100 kilometres north-northwest of where we are. Um, there's been a lot of companies have applied for a lot more land around us. I mean, almost immediately uh, after we announced that first hole from Javier on, um, uh, the 121 metres at three grams per tonne, Artemis and um, Rio Tinto put an application over the ground immediately to the east of us, which was vacant. And we've also confirmed the ground immediately to the south of Javier on, which was held by a company called Holocene. Holocene has dropped that application and Rio has picked up that application. So I don't know behind the scenes what the economic arrangement was there, but um, you know, Rio and other big players, and Fortescue and Newcrest are all big in this region. So the region is relatively remote, but 
you know, the, you know, we, access is fine and the issues, I, I think this is just going to be a region that becomes more and more important. You're going to see more and more infrastructure going into it if you continue to see these sort of... So you know, there's a bit of a land grab going on in that, oh, in that area. Yeah, and definitely. I mean, how, just in terms of when we had the news yesterday, how yeah. does all of this fit into the, the, the overall Greatland gold picture? I mean, you obviously have other assets uh, around yes. the place. Yeah, so look, we're, we're lucky to have some really good opportunities at the moment. And so one of the challenges for us is you know, allocating um, time and capital to the projects and you know, clearly with the sort of results that we're seeing out of Javier on Javier and as a key flagship process project for us at this point. But also, you know, nearby, only 15 kilometres to the west, we have Black Hills. And at Black Hills, we collected multiple gold nuggets from surface in our first field campaign. And also the rock chips that we collected further along strike established high-grade gold at surface over an 800-metre strike. So you get those sort of results, that's a great start. Now, we haven't done any drilling at Black Hills. We've just we've completed a 3D IP survey. We're awaiting the results from that. And the idea with that survey is to help us hopefully track that high-grade mineralisation that we're seeing at surface, give us some idea of well, which way is that going? Is it going east or west or, you know, uh, what's the orientation of that? And also some idea about the depth of that system. There's been a bit of drilling around uh, the Black Hills licence historically, but most of it's been quite shallow and, and uh, fairly widely spaced. Um, so that we see a lot of opportunity there. Um, then we have, you know, we have the Patterson Range East licence in the Patterson where there's another, on that licence alone, there's about another dozen targets with the same geophysical signature as Javier. So, you know, it, it, the, the possibility there is, is very large. Um, we also have, sorry. No, no, I mean, yeah. So over the next mm. few, uh, next year, let's mm. say, you'll be, mm. I mean, you know, you'll be firing on, on multiple cylinders. Let's yes, say. that's right. Yeah. So we would expect to have, look, even here in the next uh, couple of months, we've got news fire across a number of projects. We're also, we've also completed an MMI survey at Scallywag, which is the target that goes down into that license that Rio has just taken to the south. Um, so we expect news fire across multiple fronts. Um, uh, for the rest of this year and next year. Early next year we're going to draw Fire Tower. We've announced that we want to do that because that's sort of the quiet period for us in the Patterson. We can't drill out in Patterson in February, March. Um, so we'll use that opportunity to draw Fire Tower, follow up on the 3D IP survey that outlined a large uh, zone of gold mineralisation there. But yes, yeah, so we're going to be busy across you know multiple projects next year. So there's, you know, we, we really want to advance the company. The company's never been in a better position, but you know, clearly once you make the sort of discovery that we've made at Javier on where you've discovered the zone of high grade gold mineralisation, you're going to push on with that. When you're seeing, you know, 121 metres at 3 grams a tonne, then another 239 metres of visible mineralisation, you've got to get on with that. Right, so you're rubbing shoulders with giants uh, all around you. Yes, is, yes. It, is it naive to assume that you might be one of those giants uh, in, in a few years' time. Is that how it's supposed to work? No, that's to... supposed how it's supposed to work. I don't know. I, uh, look, uh, we, we just need to get on with the job of demonstrating the potential of the Javier on system, determining the extent and orientation of the mineralisation. We need to, you know, east, west, north, south, and then obviously at depth, and there's a very large depth potential, we believe, certainly further than the 780 metres where we've seen mineralisation so far, and we need to get on with proving that up, um, and that's that's sort of the first step. But look, I think what we're doing is attracting a lot of attention across the industry. Uh, people, you know, know who we are, they know the story, and, you know, we've just got to work systematically, you know, through the opportunity. Gervais Heddle, CEO at Greatland Gold, thank you very much. Thank indeed. you very much, Zach. Thank you.